Hi everyone, I'm Maggie Weldon from maggiescrochet.com and in this video we're going to show you how to do arm knitting and this is very very popular and I'm typically all about crochet but I love doing arm knitting and I've made a lot of these scarves for um, friends and family and once you get the hang of this you can do an arm knitted scarf like this, a continuous loop that you wrap around like this in exactly 25 minutes from start to finish. Um, so these samples that you see here were done with a number six super bulky weight yarn. And when we go to a close up, we're gonna be using this yarn here, and this is Lion Brand Hometown Yarn, and it's a number six super bulky weight yarn. And this one is 81 yards. So don't be afraid, once you learn how to arm knit, don't be afraid to combine worsted weight with all different weights of yarns and we've got several videos showing how to do other things. So what you want to do to get started here is use one skein of this yarn and pull the label off and use your strand from the outside and then pull from the inside. You go right here and you pull out uh, you know a bunch of yarn and to find the inside edge. Um, so now I have the two edges together, the two ends like this and you're going to need to measure off three yards. So the way I measure off three yards is I just pull this out like this and go from my nose to the tip of my hand and that's one yard. And so I just measure off the three yards like that. And this becomes your long tail. And then the, this yarn is going to be referred to as your working yarn. So right at the three yard mark, you're going to make a slip knot just like that and then we'll show you how to do that again on close up. So then this will go on your hand and then you'll start casting on with um, the long tail and the working yarn. So that's what you need to know at this point. Now we're gonna take you to a close up to show you how to do all the rest of the arm knitting projects. Thank you for watching. Hey everybody, it's Christina from maggiescrochet.com and today I'm gonna to show you how to arm knit a scarf. Arm knitting is uh, pretty easy, it's really fast, you can make some absolutely beautiful projects with it. Um, once you get the hang of it, uh, you can make a scarf usually in about just half an hour or so. Uh, today I'm going to be using Lion Brand Hometown USA yarn. This is a number six super bulky weight yarn. It's 100% acrylic, so it's very soft, it's going to make um, a nice super comfy scarf for you. Um, now this yarn is machine wash and dryable, but I don't usually recommend machine washing uh, your arm knit items because the stitches are so large and so loose, they can very easily get picked. So I'd still definitely recommend hand washing your arm knitted projects. Um, but it is kind of nice to know that you could throw it in the machine if you absolutely had to. So this color, the one I've already made up here, this is Honolulu pink. But today I'm going to be using the key lime color to show you how to make your arm knitted scarf. Now you will need two strands of yarn, but here's the good news, you can use just one skein to make your scarf. So I'm pulling from the center of the skein, which is what you would normally do if you were crocheting or knitting or something, you'd pull from the center. But then I've also got the, um, the strand that goes around the outside of the skein, and I'm gonna work from that as well, and that way I only need one skein of yarn. So I'm gonna push that to the side Maggie showed you how to measure off three yards of yarn, super easy. So I've done that as well. And I'm gonna take the three yard end, which we're gonna call our long tail. It's kind of the tail end of our project. I'm gonna take that and kind of scoot it up and over to the side and out of my way. And then this end, the, the end that's still attached to my skein, that's called my working end. So at the three yard mark, I wanna stop by making a slip knot. I usually take the yarn, grab it in one hand, wrap it around the back of my hand, back up to the top, then slide that loop off my hand, and I'm gonna pull the long tail end through from the back. And it creates this nice loop. And if you pull on the working end, that'll tighten up your knot there. And then you can pull on the long tail end to adjust it to whatever size you need. 
So take this slip knot, slide it over whichever hand you want to start with. And you don't want to tighten it all the way. If you tighten this knot all the way to your wrist, you'd never be able to get it off over your hand. So just tighten it, leave a little bit of wiggle room, make sure it slides easily on and off your wrist. So our slip knot is going to count as stitch number one. For this scarf, I'm going to do a total of eight stitches. So I've already got one. I need seven more. And this process of making our stitches to start with, this is called casting on. So I've got my long tail towards my fingertips. I'm going to bring my working end kind of towards my elbow here and pull up my wrist so there's kind of a little tent under these two strands of yarn. I'm going to take my other hand, take my index finger and my thumb, insert it in between those strands of yarn, open my fingers and drop my wrist. And when I do that, it creates this V shape across my other hand. I'm going to take the hand with the slip knot on it go under the strand closest to me, over the next one, and pick up the strand after that. And picking that up creates this little loop. I'm just going to slide that loop right on my hand. And then pull out any extra slack. I don't like to say tighten because I don't want you to get the idea that it should be tight. I just want to take out any slack there is. So that's created another stitch. So I need to repeat that a couple more times to get uh, the number of stitches I want. So again, I'm going to lift up my wrist a little bit, take my thumb and my index finger, go in between those strands, open up my fingers, and drop my wrist. So if I numbered these strands here, one, two, three, and four, I'm going to take this hand, go underneath number one, skip number two, pick up number three, and that becomes my loop that I can slide on my wrist and then take out the slack. Again, thumb and index finger, open those up, drop your wrist. You've got your V-shape. Go under number one, pick up number three. There's your loop. You can slide right on your wrist. So let's count. Remember, you're working with a double strand. So these two strands of yarn, that's one stitch, two, three, four. So I need four more. I'm going to speed up a little bit now. You can always take the video back and watch me doing it slower if you need to. Some internet browsers um, support slowing down this YouTube video. And you can certainly do that as well if I ever go too fast for you. You just click on the, uh, the settings button which is in the lower right hand corner. And uh, like I said, not all browsers support it, but if you see um, the option to control the speed there, you can slow me down to half speed. And that usually does pretty well. All right, so I need one more. I've got seven stitches here. My working tail is still towards my fingertips. My working end is uh, still towards my elbow. Make one final V under number one, pick up number three, and that should be eight loops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Perfect. So now I've cast on. I've got a little bit of my long tail left. I don't need this anymore, so I'm just going to kind of push it off to the side and ignore it. Don't cut it off because you can use it. Uh, you'll want to make sure you weave it in at the end. So we're just going to ignore it for now. So now you're ready to actually start the knitting process. To do this, take your hand that's got all your stitches on it and you're going to pull it, pick up the working end of the yarn. Now when you pick it up, you want to make sure the working end is coming out the top of your hand. You don't want to pick it up so that the working end comes out the bottom like this. Um, you created this extra loop in the back. Really, it's the most natural thing just to pick it up with the working end coming out the top. So I'm going to pick that up, grab it nice and tight, using my other hand. I'm going to pick up the very first stitch and just pull it off of my hand. And the loop that I'm, and the yarn that I'm holding becomes a loop when pulled through there. And that new loop is going to go on my opposite wrist. So that's my first stitch. And then grab your working end and just, again, pull out the slack. You don't want to tighten it too much, but just make sure there's no extra. So then we're going to do the same, same thing again. I got this hand. I'm going to pick up my working yarn working and coming out the top of my hand. Use my other hand to 
to pull off the next stitch that creates a new loop and the new loop goes on the opposite hand. Again, pick up the yarn, pull off the loop, slide the new loop onto the new hand. Now sometimes when you're arm knitting you may get distracted. Maybe you're watching TV, maybe someone's trying to talk to you, something happens, you drop your yarn and you don't know which side to start on. This is very easy to figure out, okay? Take a look at your working end of your yarn and which hand is it attached to. So it's attached to that hand. You're always going to reach over and pick it up. Another way to think of it is your working yarn is attached to your newest stitches and you have to get rid of the old stitches first. So I know these are the new stitches and these are my old stitches. So I want to pick it up with my old stitch hand so I can slide an old stitch off of my wrist and slide the new stitch onto my other hand. So again, I'm going to reach over, cross over, pick up an old stitch, and then I have a new stitch. And you'll just continue doing this all the way across. So I've got just a couple more left on this row. And for the last one, it's exactly the same. Pick up the yarn, slide the stitch off, slide the new stitch on the other hand, and now this hand is free. It's free! So now all my stitches are on my other hand. I've completed one row. Start the next row, it's just kind of the mirror image. Again, we're going to pick up the yarn, working ends coming out the top of your hand. At the beginning of the row is the only time you won't reach over because it's connected. So you pick it up with the same hand, Working ends coming up the top, take your other hand, slide off a loop, and slide this new loop onto the opposite hand. Then we'll reach across, slide the loop off, slide the new loop on. And you'll just continue back and forth like this until your scarf is as long as you want it. Um, I usually get about 22 or 23 rows. You may get more or less depending on uh, how tight your stitches are and also the size of your wrists. If you have smaller wrists than I do, you might be able to get um, a row or two more. If you have larger wrists, you might get a row or two less. So here's my last stitch of row two. Grab the yarn in this hand, pull the loop off, and slide the new loop onto my other hand. So that's just two rows, and as you can see, it's about what is that, maybe four inches or so? Two rows, four inches. It's the largest stitch I know. It's going to work up super fast. So I'm going to keep going back and forth like this until I've used up all of my skein except the last three to four yards because you'll need that to um, finish off your scarf. If you want it shorter than that, that's perfectly fine. Um, if you want it longer than that, then you're going to need an extra skein but you can definitely get one good sized scarf out of one skein. So I'm gonna go finish up, um, knit the rest of my rows, and then I'll come back and show you how to bind off. All right, I've used up most of my yarn, and now I'm ready to bind off. Um, here's a quick shot of the scarf so far. Now this side is called the knit side. You can see these kind of V-shaped stitches. Those are your knit stitches. But if we flip it over, these bumps here, this is the purl side. Usually the knit side is considered the right side. So I'll flip it back over this way. Um, I really like the way this has turned up. As I said, it's very soft, very squishy. It's gonna be super comfy. So when you come to bind off, it does not matter if your stitches are on your left or your right hand, either hand is fine. The process is the same, we'll just uh, do a mirror image. So I'm gonna start by knitting two stitches just like I would normally. Pick up my yarn, there's one stitch, and here's a second. So once you have two stitches, you're gonna take the first one, the one nearest your elbow, and you're gonna pick it up and pull it over the other stitch and off of your hand and just let it drop. Just let it drop, you don't need it anymore. So now I've got only one stitch on my left hand. 
and I'm going to make sure that's nice and snug. I usually tighten my last row, my bind off row, I might tighten it a little more than I normally would otherwise just to make sure that my edge is nice and secure. So now I'm going to knit another stitch, pick up my yarn, pull the stitch over my hand, slide the new stitch onto my other hand. Then again, I'm going to take the first stitch, the one closer to my elbow, pick it up, pull it over, and just drop it. And then pull out any slack in the yarn, just like that. And that's how you bind off. So we're slowly getting rid of stitches. I'm going to knit another stitch. Take the one closer to my elbow, pull it off, take the slack out of my yarn, I'm going to knit another stitch, slide the new stitch on my hand, take the stitch nearest my elbow, pull it off, and then tighten. So you'll just repeat this until you only have one stitch remaining. All right, so I'm getting, I've got all my stitches off of this hand. I've got two stitches left here. Take the one nearest my elbow, pull it off my hand. So I have only the one stitch on my one wrist. So pull out any slack. Then you're just going to grab what's left of your yarn and just pull it straight through. And if you just kind of pull that nice and snug, that's the end of your scarf. So we've got this nice tight edge there for the end of our scarf. Now you have a couple of options on finishing. You can leave this just as it is and you want to weave in your extra end here, uh, but you could leave it just as it is. Uh, you could put fringe on it, which I'll show you on the pink one, or what I'm going to show you on the green one um, is I'm going to sew it into uh, an infinity scarf. Infinity scarves are also sometimes called uh, eternity scarves or cowls. It's all the same thing, just depends on what you like to call it. So I'm going to gather my whole scarf up in front of me, making sure um, the right side is up. If you want, you can purposefully put a twist in it. Um, some people like to do that. I like to do it just all the right side. So I'm going to match up my, here's my beginning where I cast on, and here's my end where I did my cast off. I'm going to line them up, and I'm going to use what's left of my tail to sew this together. Sometimes depending on which arm you bound off of, your tails from each end might be, they might both be up here or they might both be down here. If they are, you can tie them into a knot um, just to give a little extra security. If they're not, don't worry about it. Mine don't match up, so I'm just going to um, sew these together. If you have a giant needle with a giant eye, you can thread this through there and sew it. You can use a crochet hook to help you pull it through you can do what I'm going to do and that's just use my fingers. So I'm going to take the yarn, pull it through this side, and then I'm just going to kind of whip stitch and I'm going to go back over, pull it through, pull it under a couple of strands here. And pull it under a couple of strands on this side and just keep working across until they're nice and joined. So this is why you wanted to make sure you left enough yarn at the end uh, to make sure you have enough to sew your scarf together. If you're not doing an infinity scarf, you can leave um, just a little bit less yarn. So that's gonna sew that together and then I'll have one big circle scarf. Now the other thing you can do, as I mentioned, if you uh, don't want to do the infinity scarf or the round scarf, the infinity, eternity, cowl, like I said, there are a lot of different things you can call it. Um, one cute way to finish this off is to add fringe. So I'm going to add fringe here on this pink one. Now I went ahead and cut my fringe before I made this scarf because I wanted to make sure I had enough yarn. But the way you make fringe, you take a piece of cardboard, this is about, let's see, this is about maybe eight inches wide, and you'll just take your yarn 
and wrap it around the board as many times as you want fringe. So this right here, this would get me about three pieces of fringe. And then you'll cut it off and you'll end up, you'll cut it across the top and you'll end up with all these strands of yarn that we can now use to add fringe to our scarf. So I think I'm gonna use two strands at a time. So here's two strands of yarn. Gonna find the middle. And you'll want to do about eight little groups of fringe. We had eight stitches, so I usually do um, as many groups of fringe as I had stitches. I've still got my tail here on this end, so we can, when we cut that, we can cut it to the same length as our fringe and have a little extra one there. So I've got the center of my fringe. I'm just gonna find the bottom of a stitch. I'm gonna come up from the back, put that loop up, and just pull it through just enough that I can reach through the middle of my loop pick up the loose ends and pull them through and then pull it nice and tight like that and that's how you make a fringe so again I'm gonna pick up two strands of my pre-cut fringe find the center approximately find the next stitch that I want to uh, put this on stick the middles up from the back you can do from the back or the front. Uh, the important thing is just to make sure they're consistent. So once I've got the loop through there, I'm going to reach through, pull the ends through, and pull it nice and tight. And that's how you make fringe. So I'll just finish doing that across here. Do it on the other side as well. Um, and that's how you um, can finish off your scarf. Well guys, I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have questions about this project, uh, you can certainly ask them down in the comments and we'll do our best to help you out. Down in the description, you'll find links to uh, the materials we used in this project. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We're planning to add a lot more new videos soon, so you'll definitely want to uh, know when those come out. So you can do that by subscribing. And thanks for watching. So I'm going from this side to that side and I'm going to pick up my yarn and draw that up and then finish my double crochet like that. So if you do, let's say I've seen scarves made with only pulling five loops through and they look amazing. They're really cute. They come out.